Hey, it's March 26, 2021. 41 years ago today, I made my first solo uh, flight in a powered airplane at this airport. I'm at the Henry County Speedway, Hampton, not sure which one they call it anymore. And uh, 1979, it was called the Bear Creek Airport. It's pretty much the same as it was back in 1979. That building over there was there. My dad parked his plane about where that white truck's sitting. The gas pumps were right here in the center of this uh, parking lot here. And the main office building is the same building it was uh, pretty much in uh, 1979. They've redone the insides of it. There's the King Air. And they've got chairs out there just like they used to have rocking chairs 41 years ago that you could sit in and watch people take off and land. And they had an airport dog that walked around, hung out all day. The runway was only 3,000 feet back then and narrow, and now it's 5,500 feet and a lot wider. Uh, the end of the runway was right up there, and the road to come to the uh, airport was right off the end of it. And to keep people from driving onto the runway, they had that deal with uh, pipes with chains going through it right off the end of the runway. And uh, a lot of times when I came out here and did touch and goes, uh, somebody would park their car right across the street from the uh, end of the runway. And as I would come over, I would buzz right over the top of them. And then I would do a touch and go and come back around the next time and they would always move over a little bit. That was always fun. I like doing that. I wanted to uh, come out here today and recreate my first solo from this airport. Back in 79, my dad bought this uh, Cessna 140 and uh, started giving me flying lessons in it. And when I turned 16, my 16th birthday, I was able to make my first solo flight. So we brought the plane over here to the gas pumps and filled it all the way up. It was a patroller model airplane, uh, or 140, with uh, 42 gallons of gas total, which was a lot more than uh, a normal 140 would hold. And uh, we did that so that it would be heavier and fly more like when my dad was in there with me. So after we made a couple of uh, practice uh, touch and goes, he got out, signed off my logbooks, filled it up with gas, I turned it around and uh, started up and taxied out. I went down here to uh, runway six and I did uh, my before takeoff checklist and run up. I did my checklist three times because I was nervous because I was all by myself for the first time, which wasn't a big deal really. And I finally took off, flew around the airport, came in and landed. And I thought, man, this is easy. This is great. I can do this. So I made my two other uh, takeoffs and landings that were required, came in and landed. And my dad uh, cut my shirt tail off, which I don't know where happened to that, which is the tradition when you make your first solo flight. After that, we spent a lot of time flying around to fly-ins and air shows and the 140, mainly to build uh, my time and to just enjoy uh, hanging out with other guys. His friends uh, would always be there and several of them had Cessna 195s. And uh, I started liking those, you know, and I thought, man, someday I got to get a 195. So. After all these years, I finally decided a few years ago that I was getting old and I had the money. I need to find a 195 and buy it and uh, enjoy it for a few years. So this right here is the plane I bought. It's my dream plane. So today I'm gonna make, uh, recreate my solo, first solo in my dream plane, Cessna 195. So here we go. All right. There we are, in the plane, we'll get out of here and make a loop around the pattern to reenact my 
first solo flight 41 years ago today. Clear. Okay, here we are. Got her running. Gonna go off on, uh, go around on six. When I went out here, my 16th birthday, like I say, I was kind of nervous, so I went right out the same exact taxiway, same exact runway, and uh, did my takeoff checklist three times. I finally decided, well, I guess it's time to go. I sit out here all day, so off I went. Wind's a little favoring the other runway, but uh, nobody's around, so I'm going to go on 2-4, the same runway I did my first solo on. Instruments. Good. Attitude trim is set. Run up, do that real quick. Speedway traffic system 2139 Charlie is going to uh, depart on 2 4 to remain in the pattern for one circuit. Here we go. Over here is the speedway. I used to use that to judge my downwind leg every time. As 
I came around. Here we are. 1,800 feet. Speedway traffic 2139 Charlie's downwind for 24. Full stop. Bring the power on back. Here's a Charlie. How are the winds down there? The winds are probably favoring six, but uh, I just wanted to do it uh, one circuit on 24. But uh, I'll be out of your way and you can use uh, six if you want. Okay, yeah, I'm about uh, four mile, on a four mile final for six. I'll slow it down and uh, give you time. I'll be there in uh, about two minutes. Cool. All right. Traffic landing on six, are you a full stop? Yes, sir, full stop. All right. Two one three nine Charlie is turning final for two four full stop at uh, Speedway. All right, just like last time, forty forty one years ago. And Speedway traffic is probably eight six nine nine hundred on a three mile final six. I go for the three-point landing just like I did back then. I don't like to three-point this airplane because it's hard. That wasn't bad. Twenty. Three nine Charlie's clear two four. And speedway traffic to Tabria is final six. All right, I made it. First solo flight, not done yet. I remember the one of the first things my dad told me was when you're flying a plane like this, not done flying till it's tied down. And it's even more so in this airplane because I can't see where I'm going. And it takes pretty much 100% of my uh, concentration just to watch where I'm going in taxi. And I'll come back and pick the wife up and head home. Speedway traffic, Catabria is clear of the runway. That's it. Thanks for watching. I just did this really for myself. But if you found it interesting, uh, I hope you did. See you next time. Speedway traffic.